factor to in-state rivalries like this one? And now that you've kind of been in it for a while, how was your understanding, appreciation, just the concept of Nebraska Creighton changed? Over the last yeah, I mean, it, it's a, it's a fun game uh, for players. It, it's a great game to play in. Rivalry games. It's uh, it, it's obviously great for the fan base. Uh, it's just not a whole lot of fun for the coaches. Um, but you know, it, it's listen. Last year was a lot of fun. The previous three were not very much fun in in this series. Uh, they're an unbelievable team, and you know, just watching them last night, second in the nation in three pointers made per game, over 12, uh, shooting over 40 percent as a team from the three point line. Five guys shooting over 40 percent, and they just put you in so many difficult positions uh, with their ability to stretch the floor and the pace uh, that they play with. Uh, Mac has is just done a phenomenal job. Uh, you know, with this group, a lot of those guys were part of that special season that they had a year ago, being a play away from being in the Final Four. And uh, they're going to put us in a lot of tough spots. Uh, you know, it's one of those games where you just have to do everything you can to contest all the shots, knowing they're going to make some. It can't deflate you, uh, you know, with their ability and the talent that they have on the floor. Uh, Colt Brenner being able to step out and make threes consistently. I think he's made more this year than he did the entire season. A year ago, uh, but yeah, it it, uh, it starts in transition. We have to get back. Uh, we did a good job of that last year, um, but they're so fast. I think they're faster even than they were a year ago, and they've got five guys on the floor really at all times that can make a shot and make a play. What kind, what kind of opportunity does a game like this present? What do you think you can learn about your team playing? Like yeah, I mean, we'll we'll learn a lot about our team after this game, and you know, we're going to grow from it. You know, whatever the result is, and that's how we try to approach every game. Is you know, regardless of what happens out there, you're gonna uh, find a way to learn and, and get better, and, and grow from things you're doing well. And you know, I think our team has been very resilient in in that fact early on in this process. And this you know happens to be a ranked team uh, in a rivalry game playing in our home court. And I know we're gonna have a phenomenal crowd. I love the sellout. Uh, it's gonna be a great atmosphere. And you know it's it's an exciting uh, day for everybody in the state. And uh, again, being part of it, Iowa State, Iowa, in in a lot of different uh, ways as a player, as a coach, uh, you know I know how much these games mean. So you know we're we're going to be ready. Uh, you know we've had a lot of days to prepare. It feels like we haven't played in a month after all the games that we played uh, early on in a short amount of time. Uh, just try to do everything we can, knowing that we're not going to be able to get every play and every set that they run. They are so good at playing random uh, basketball, uh, spacing the floor, uh, the pace, the way they share it. Uh, they just put you in a lot of tough spots. We just have to go out. Uh, the runs that they are capable of going on, uh, I think it was a 17 to nothing run <clears throat> uh, in the last 10 minutes of the first half, 19 to three to finish the half. Uh, and that was the difference in the game. So, you know, you have to do everything you can to try to limit uh, the runs that, uh, that Creighton can go on. And uh, again, not get deflated when they're making tough shots. I know it's early with this group, but do you have a good sense of, of the mentality they have in those sort of situations? Yeah, I think our team, for the most part, has done a, a solid job of playing through runs, and it, we're going to have to continue on with that for, for the entire season. You, people ask, you know, last year, I mean, we had three guys that played last year. It was Juwan, uh, CJ, and Casey, and, you know, Casey didn't, I think he played only 14 minutes uh, in that game. So we've got a lot of new, new players, and, you know, just talk about the importance uh, of the game and just got to go out there and compete, play hard, which again, that's what this group is made of. I think the DNA of this group is a team that goes out and it's very competitive, uh, you know, from the start of the game all the way to the finish. And we just have to keep on uh, with that, uh, have to continue the trend of taking care of the basketball. We've done a really good job of, uh, you know, sharing it, assist to turnover ratio. I think it was 18 to 2 in, uh, in, in a couple games ago and, and 18 to 9. Uh, in our last game, and I think three games in a row now where our point guard hasn't had a turnover uh, with Jamarcus. So we need to continue on with that and uh, and just go out there and compete on every possession. Because if you don't, Creighton's going to make you pay. You have a lot of similarities from last year's team, but also you're quite a bit different with some of the new pieces you've added. How much do you take 
from last year's formula and the game plan while also trying to play to the strengths of this current group? Yeah, I mean, it's it's different. Uh, both teams are different. And, uh, you know, I, I still think, you know, at the end of the day, when you look at this great roster, they're going to be right there at the end, just like they were last year, uh, just with the way uh, that they shoot the ball and have multiple playmakers. Uh, you know, Shireman is just playing at a, at a completely different level right now. You know, Trey Alexander was phenomenal. Uh, last night, Kalkbrenner's their rock. Uh, they can always throw that thing in there, and, and uh, you know, generally good things happen uh, when they do that. And then Ashworth, if he's by himself out there by on the three, it's a layup. So, you know, they just put you in a lot of different positions. And then, you know, kind of that rotating spot with Miller, with with Trout, with with Farabello, uh, you know, all those guys certainly are capable. And then, you know, I think Frankie King is certainly their most physical uh, player in the roster. So all those guys uh, are capable going off for big nights. Uh, but again, it's just sticking to the plan and, uh, and and not getting deflated when things aren't going your way. Building on something you just said there, Fred, uh, about the new players, do you have to educate them on this series? And how do you convey to them, I guess, the importance of this game, at least in terms of the, the fan perspective? Oh, I don't think so. I mean, hell, they all have these things and, you know, they're looking at them constantly and they see what everybody's saying about them. And, you know, I wish that they didn't have <clears throat> as much. My life is a lot more enjoyable when I don't have that phone with me. But, you know, it's it's being talked about a lot. That's just the makeup of these types of games and in the atmosphere that we're going to have out there. You know, certainly is a great opportunity for us, uh, you know, to continue on and in the process and, you know, play uh, a, an unbelievable opponent and, uh, you know, see how we fare against them. So, you know, it's a great opportunity. We've got a hell of a stretch coming up here with this one, with uh, Minnesota, Michigan State, and at Kansas State. Uh, you know, we got a very important stretch uh, coming up here. First one obviously being Sunday, and we're going to learn a lot about ourselves here in a couple days. Bryce talked a little bit about the rest that they've got this week after a busy, you know, first seven games. What was kind of your mentality going? Yeah, yeah, yesterday was our heavy day and you know, we tried to get them up around a game type load and you know, I meet with our sports scientists every week and we map out the week on how we want to uh, uh, you know, map out our practices. So yesterday was a hard practice. Today was a moderate. Tomorrow's going to be a light uh, day heading into the afternoon game on Sunday. Uh, we were able to get two quality days of rest. Uh, guys still came in and got their work in, uh, you know, getting up shots and that type of thing. Uh, but, you know, it was an important week to recover because we did have some guys with some nagging injuries, uh, you know, but at the same time, try to stay sharp with, with the things that we've been doing. And it's delicate, you know, how much, you know, do you want to go? Uh, but with the things that we've been doing, uh, you know, to have a week off in between, uh, in some regards, it's been good. Another, uh, you know, on the other hand, it's, it's a little bit difficult because I, th I felt we were in a pretty good rhythm. You know, but again, we've tried to uh, make it as game-like as possible in yesterday's practice, uh, backed off a little today, and then again, tomorrow's going to be a speed-type practice and, and getting ready for that um, uh, tip-off on Sunday. You uh, mentioned wanting to see more physicality. Just with that in mind, how have the past couple of days of practice been? Uh, yeah, it, it's been good. We, we really have tried to address it. Um, you know, especially on the defensive rebounding and, and that type of thing. Offensively, I, I've liked some things that we've done. We've been tough with the ball. We have done a good job of not over penetrating. You know, those are toughness uh, type plays when, when you do that. Uh, but defensively, we got to get back to that mindset of hitting, being physical, uh, the more physical team, and finishing every possession with a two hand rebound. I thought we slipped a little bit in that area the last couple games. So it has been a big emphasis. I think our guys have done a good job. Uh, this week, and we're going to have to obviously tomorrow with the size and length that, that they'll have on the floor on that, or on Sunday. That note, have you watching Colorado State creating game? Colorado State was really physical against them. Have you kind of, what have you taken from that? Yeah, well, one thing Colorado State's a, a, a damn good team. I mean, you saw what they did to Colorado in, in the next game as well, being up, uh, I think, almost 20 points in that game as well. So, Colorado State's a heck of a team. And they did, they did obviously some really good things. And, you know, we all as coaches go back and watch the previous however many games. We've watched every Creighton game that they played this year. And Colorado State did a great job of limiting runs. And, and that's, I think, the most impressive thing that they were able to do in that game. And then uh, Creighton had one of those nights where the ball didn't go in the hoop. You know, and that's not going to happen very often with that team. And we have to do the best job we can of making them uh, miss and contesting every shot. And if we do that, you live with the result. But we can't give them wide open uh, looks. Uh, again, Trey, the shots he was hitting in the mid range yesterday, uh, it was really, really impressive. And then the way they spray it out. I think Shireman's hit over three threes in every game uh, that he's played this year and multiple games going into last season. 
Uh, so you just have to contest as well as you can uh, and not be surprised when they get it off quick and not be surprised by their speed. We can't come over at the first media timeout and say, guys, we told you they were going to play fast. We have to be diligent in our get back. Uh, we cannot chase balls that we're not going to get. Our get back guys cannot uh, uh, crash and, and go against the rules. And uh, we, again, we just have to get back and, and limit them in transition. What do you tell Rand? And what do you, I guess your bigs in general, because they're going to go against Kalkbrenner, who is such a uh, difficult match. Yeah, yeah. He, you know, they're so good. The, the, I've been really impressed with their defense this year. And a lot of that is obviously Kalkbrenner. He is so good at, uh, at controlling the paint. Uh, they forced Oklahoma State into countless long two point shots. And, you know, Kalkbrenner is the reason for that. So, uh, you know, again, you can't go over him. You're not going to get your shot up, and it's going to fuel them. Their, his block shots fuel their break. And that's what I saw when you looked at the Iowa game. They had an 8 nothing run, and it started with a block shot that led to an open three in transition. And then Kalkbrenner gets a rim run. That's one of the very underrated things that he does is his ability to run to the front of the rim and get an easy basket in transition. And then the next possession, it was in a minute and 10 seconds. They went on an 8 nothing run, and I think that was the final uh, uh, margin was about eight points in that Iowa game. So those are the things you have to limit. And being smart in the paint and having good shot selection in the paint is imperative in a game like this. When you have Kalkbrenner and you have King, who's a great pick and roll defender, uh, you have to be smart when you get it in there. Thank you, guys.